Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Beard. Today's question, semi-productive maybe, how do I reduce my stigmatism? Ask the beard, ask it, ask it. First of all, if you're new to all this stuff and you're just looking for quick steps on how to re reduce your stigmatism, I'm not the guy to help you because what I say is you need like a month of just absorbing information, a learning curve. We're living in the society of gimme, gimme, gimme. Everything instantly, everything quickly, learn nothing, get everything. That's not myopia and that's not me. If that's you, then learning curve. I assume you're going to spend a month understanding doctors, understanding your eyes, understanding the interplay of all these things before you make actual changes. Don't monkey with your lenses. That said, quick five minute bit on how to reduce your stigmatism. First of all, astigmatism is the cylinder value of your lenses. If you don't know about that, then you're definitely not ready for this. Directional blur, right? And reducing your astigmatism, the cylinder number of your glasses, is a good idea because you're reducing your dependence on this directional correction, which the more of that there is, the further you are from natural focal plane, the further you are from natural focal plane, the more steps are involved in reducing your glasses. So getting ahead of that is a little bit handy. Now, first you want to reduce in close up. You need less cylinder correction when you're in front of a screen. The closer you are to stuff, the less astigmatism is noticeable, right? So say for example, you have minus two cylinder, which would be pretty high in your regular glasses. Then for close up, maybe you only need minus one. I'm not saying that's the number, but it will be lower for close up than for distance. So my recommendation is always reduce cylinder for close up correction differentials first. If you don't have differentials yet, you're not ready for this topic. But if you do, and the cylinder number is the same in your distance classes and your close up classes, normalize in differential, reduce in differential first. Also note that a half diopter of cylinder reduction equals about a quarter diopter of spherical reduction. And a lot of times, conversely, you can substitute a quarter diopter of spherical for a half diopter of cylinder. It doesn't always work, but for example, if your astigmatism is overcorrected, you have more cylinder than you need, you could reduce that by half diopter and add a quarter diopter of spherical, and that may give you the same visual acuity. Ideal scenario is having a supportive optometrist, optic shop, somebody with a high quality, expensive, fancy test lens kit. Quality is important here because the better the quality of those lenses, the more, the better you'll get an idea of how much cylinder correction you need. You'd go to that person, you'd buy them some donuts, you'd, you'd buy glasses from them. You get 10 minutes with their test lens kit and you just take out half diopter of the cylinder correction and see how you do. Right? And if things are a little bit funky blurry, you add a quarter diopter of spherical correction and see if that gives you a near equivalent result. If it does, try it again, right? See if you can reduce another half diopter, substitute a quarter diopter of spherical and find out where you're at, actually at what you need for close up. So first you change the close up. What you don't want is directional blur, right? I try in low light situations, make sure that you can still see the screen clearly. Just make sure there's not weird ghosting showing up. A tiny little bit is okay, but no more than a tiny little bit. You don't want to introduce eye strain. You just want to reduce it to where the bare minimum of what you actually need. People sometimes get too optimistic with this. They reduce too much and then they come back to me and say, yeah, I did too much of this. Normal, you might as well avoid that, right? Now you've got a controlled environment. You only reduced it in close up where you need less in the first place and you're in a controlled environment that generally doesn't change. See how many minutes we have left, 40 seconds. You take a few months, two, three, four months of that, make sure the biology is adapted to it fully, and then use those differential glasses with an eye chart at any distance that you can see those letters and see if there's directional blur. Actually, ideally you also did that when you started, just to compare three months ago versus now. Is there a little bit of a ghosting between the letters as you're looking at something further away? Because remember, you have more noticeable astigmatism at greater distances. And then see if that directional blur starts going away. If it went away, then you can also make that reduction for your normalized glasses after three or four months, right? Another thing with this, generally speaking, it's a good idea to make spherical reductions, at least two, before you're making a cylinder reduction. Don't make both of them at the same time. Only change one focal plane at a time. I talk about these things. That's why I say there's a month learning curve because you really want to absorb all the little details of what makes this work without you having to spend too much effort. Since that's five minutes, that's it for this one. 
don't monkey with lenses is the main takeaway from this. If you're into astigmatism, there's a whole giant astigmatism section on mbopia.org that you should be reading about. Most people don't have real astigmatism. It's lens induced. If your glasses started out with no cylinder correction or very low cylinder correction and it went up, 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 that's lens induced astigmatism in most cases. If you have medical issues, medical conditions, medical stuff, get a checkup from an ophthalmologist. Ideally, somebody who's not trying to sell you glasses in a shopping mall and be conservative and get second opinions if you're not sure and don't listen to random people on the internet unless they have an amazing, amazing beard like this, it's huge and glorious. If you enjoy these, give it a thumbs up. There's still gonna be more daily ones. The next ones might be a little bit ranty and less productive. Anyway, I hope you subscribed. See you in the next one. Meow, 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 meow.